Hello, dear student, good afternoon. Just have a brief introduction about me. I'm Sanjeev Kumar. I did BTEC from Baba Institute of Technology. In 2014, I have already qualified CDS, Combined Defense Service Examination. In 2016 and 17, I have already written two times mains. In 2017, I have already written one book, Civil Service Main Examination Practice Workbook in current publication. I have around three and a half year experience in teaching field I teach in different different institutes at uh, Vedanta IS Institute in Rohini East, in Satya IS Academy in Hyderabad. And uh, just before this lockdown period, I was also taking classes for UPSC student as well as Arunachal Pradesh PSC uh, Public Service Commission student uh, in Itanagar and Nahar Lagoon. Uh, I am also associated with uh, Delhi Career Group and uh, Information TV Private Limited. Now, I am going to discuss uh, a geography to topic, an important topic of geography that is pressure belt, atmospheric pressure belt. Just before understanding the atmospheric pressure belt, we have to understand the atmospheric pressure. What is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure can be defined as the force of air per unit area. The force exerted by the air unit over one unit area is called as atmospheric pressure. It is measured in Newton per meter square. Force unit is Newton and area per meter square. That is also called as Pascal. 100 Pascal equal to 1 hectopascal equal to 1 MB and generally we measure the atmospheric pressure in MB when we move or when rise in the altitude, then there is decrease in the atmospheric pressure with the rate of 34 MB per 300 meter. So it helps in meteorological evaluation estimation. The weather conditions, cyclonic phenomena or heavy rainfall phenomena. Now, uh, you, uh, instrument which is used for measuring this atmospheric pressure is barometer. Uh, just have a look of barometer. This barometer, general structure of barometer, liquid SD, we have a beaker in which we put an inverted tube that is attached with a scale. This is scale measuring rise in the liquid mercury or fall in of it along with this atmospheric pressure when air is heavy there is more atmospheric pressure than there is rise in the barometer reading so remember that rise in the barometer reading indicate fair weather while fall in the barometer reading indicate bad weather so meteorological department can understand when there is rise and the barometer reading then it is clear fair weather there is no phenomena of rain or any kind of disturbances generally in winter we have high pressure high atmospheric pressure and summer we have low atmospheric pressure now some important word just like pressure gradient pressure gradient rate of change of pressure per unit horizontal column can be defined as pressure gradient it is also alveol and metrological study. Isobar, if we connect all the dots, the imaginary dots of same pressure, atmospheric pressure, then it is called as isobar. So these are the imaginary lines which connect all the points of same atmospheric pressure. Now what are the factors which influence atmospheric pressure? Temperature. During high temperature, there is inverse relationship between temperature and pressure. High temperature generally reflect low air pressure or low atmospheric pressure. When there is low temperature then it seems to be high atmospheric pressure. Generally in winter we have high atmospheric pressure while in summer we have low atmospheric pressure. So temperature is one important factor. After that Altitude, rise in altitude, there is rise in altitude led to decrease in the atmospheric pressure. 
then rotation of the earth due to rotation of the earth uh, this coriolis force also deflected the surrounding airs towards right hand in northern hemisphere towards left hand in southern hemisphere that is also feral law uh, according to feral law the air deflected towards right hand how we can notice the direction of the air generally air coming from which direction defines the direction of the air just like this is going towards north coming from south southern okay this is coming from south side towards uh, from the western side towards eastern side southwest direction okay so we can measure by facing the air we have to face the air from the source to destination and then look at right hand so our face is this way and towards right hand air is deflecting in northern hemisphere towards uh, left hand deflecting in southern hemisphere your face should be towards south then this is your left hand so air is deflecting towards left hand so it is the Ferrell's law which defines the Coriolis force that in southern hemisphere air deflects towards left hand in northern hemisphere air deflects towards right hand now pressure belts pressure belts are zone of low and high pressure this zone of low and high pressure found in different different part of the earth so we have divided earth into different atmospheric pressure belts generally around the equator we have equatorial low pressure belt then subtropical high pressure belt around 30 to 35 degree in northern as well as southern hemisphere then we have uh, subpolar low pressure belt around subpolar region uh, around 60 to 65 degree in north and southern hemisphere then we have polar high pressure belts and both the hemisphere around the pole so first equatorial low pressure belt it is located 5 to 10 degree north and south of the equator this is region where northeast trade wind and southeast trade wind both converges with each other and rises to higher altitude this rising air after rising up to a certain height or achieving dew point when air become stagnant it starts to descend towards polar region or it descend around subtropical high pressure in northern and southern hemisphere around 30 to 35 degree north and south latitude this descending air is dry descending air is cool thus it create high pressure in this region that's why it is subtropical high pressure it is tropical region tropical region covered uh, around 23 and half degree in north and southern hemisphere from equator to 23 and half degree north and south it is tropical region after the temperate region then frigid region okay so that's why subtropical high pressure belt here in comparison to the equator temperature is low in subtropical high pressure uh, in 30 to 35 degree latitude here the sun's rays fall not exactly perpendicular as throughout the year fall over the equator that create warm temperature or high temperature throughout the year at equator that is not the case with uh, this subtropical high pressure wells here sun's rays fall little bit slanty so temperature in comparison to the equator is low then the pressure is high in comparison to the equator pressure must be high here now understand some words just like doldrum some important word memorize them remember them just like doldrum itcj intertropical convergence zone roaring 40s furious 50s and sinking 60s uh, now 
फर्स्ट डोल ड्रम डोल ड्रम मीन्स द जोन ऑफ काम वेयर एयर बिकम स्टेगनेंट एयर डिड नॉट राइज फॉर द वेयर एयर स्टार्ट टू डिसेंट आफ्टर राइजिंग अप टू ए सर्टेन पॉइंट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज डोल ड्रम रीजन ऑफ काम जोन दैट वॉज ऑल्सो आस्ड बाई यू पी एस सी वॉट इज डोल ड्रम इट इज जोन ऑफ हाई प्रेजर जोन ऑफ लो प्रेजर अराउंड द इक्वेटर अराउंड द ट्रॉपिक्स सो सच काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन ऑलरेडी आस आई टी सी जेट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंटर ट्रॉपिकल कन्वर्जेंस जोन एंटर ट्रॉपिकल कन्वर्जेंस जोन इज नथिंग बट इट इज अ प्रेसर बेल्ट और लो प्रेसर बेल्ट अराउंड द इक्वेटर विच डिफ्लेक्ट टू वर्ड्स नॉर्थ एंड साउथ एलोंग विथ अपरेंट मूवमेंट ऑफ द सन generally sun move from subtropical uh, from tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere this is apparent movement sun does not move it is earth which revolve around the sun but apparently uh, it looks like that sun is moving from tropic of cancer to tropic of cancer Uh, tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn uh, at one point of time especially and summer solstice on 21st june sun is just overhead tropic of cancer while uh, during winter on 22nd december sun is just perpendicular to the tropic of capricorn on 21st march and 23rd september sun is just overhead to the equator so apparent movement of the sun this itc jet intertropical convergence zone deflect around 5 to 10 degree north and south that is also reason behind the southwest monsoon coming of southwest monsoon in last week of the may or first week of the june which touch the coast of kerala and gradually move towards central india eastern india then reach delhi around 15 july so this is itc jet there is separate topic itc jet as well uh, the factors affected by itc jet monsoon phenomena associated with the ic itc jet i will explain there now subtropical high pressure belt subtropical high pressure belt also called as horse latitude because in ancient time uh, generally voice move with the deflection of the air because it is zone of high pressure here air descent that rises at equator so it is zone of high pressure the movement of air is very slow that cause is stagnant of voice so traders throw traders usually throw their horses into the oceans to reduce the weight of the voice to make them capable to move in slow movement of the air generally during high pressure in winter you can also associate this phenomena with delhi in winter generally air move very slowly so uh the pollutions that created in delhi regions did not go outside if it doesn't go outside then it create a problem of choking point when we feel irritation in eyes throat and so on so during high pressure there is slow movement of the air during low pressure during summer there is very rapid movement of the air we uh, experience low around the region of rajasthan up delhi and so on so this is horse latitude because traders throw their horses into the ocean to reduce the uh, weightage of the voice so that it can move it is known as horse latitude subpolar low pressure belt air that move 
from high pressure to low pressure this is high pressure subtropical high pressure moving towards subpolar low pressure belt so here both westerlies and polar easterlies is striking and rising towards the higher altitude and uh, they further deflect towards polar region and subtropical high pressure region okay so subpolar low pressure because in comparison to the polar region here temperature is higher <laughs> due to higher temperature pressure is low this is region of around the pole so it is subpolar region at pole it is high pressure or polar region polar high pressure okay uh, here temperature remain very low throughout the year uh, generally it is zero or less than that so air deflected with high speed from polar region towards the subpolar low pressure okay now i will discuss further types of wind types of wind just like permanent wind or planetary winds uh, these are trade winds westerlies prevailing westerlies and polar easterlies all these winds are permanent winds some winds are seasonal winds just like monsoon wind only blow during monsoon seasons sea breeze or land breeze mountain or mountain breeze a valley breeze just kind of seasonal winds for short time period some local winds also that arises in particular region just like lu uh, cherry blossom mango shower kal besaki uh, chinook mistral and so on i will discuss them now first trade wind their direction i hope clear to you their direction is northeast it is coming from northeast so their direction is northeast why it is coming from northeast it is high pressure here here is low pressure equatorial low pressure so air move from high pressure to low pressure and the direction of air is northeast why due to coral uh, due to the law of ferrell ferrell said that in northern hemisphere wind will deflect towards right hand so towards right hand air is deflecting okay uh, your face should be in the direction of the air then you can judge by direction of the air whether it is moving towards right hand or left hand here facing towards polar region okay uh, in the direction of the air westerly is wind moving from western direction or southwest direction south westerlies okay polar easterlies so their direction is according to ferrell law now why their name is trade wind because they assist in the trade especially during ancient times when the waves move with the support of air pressure with the support of these pressure belts so this zone was very favorable zone for the trade trade of horses and goods this is known as north east trade wind south east trade wind because of their directions and because of region they assist traders to do trades westerlies westerlies are more stronger in southern hemisphere in comparison to northern hemisphere that was also question uh, why southern hemisphere winds are more continuous dominant strong in comparison to northern hemisphere so it is because of southern hemisphere is dominant with the water bodies sufficient amount of moisture is available over there northern hemisphere there is land mass maximum covered with the land mass less water bodies so uh, the pressure belts generally continuous and more stronger created in southern hemisphere in comparison to northern hemisphere now these winds are also known as by different different names like roaring 40s because of their sound 
they create roar they roar when they blow in southern hemisphere around the 40s so it is known as roaring 40s then further their speed reduce so at 50 degree latitude they are known as furious 50s then they start to shrink down then shrinking 60s around the subpolar low pressure belt so i hope this trade wind westerlies easterlies all are clear now another phenomena uh hadley cell and ferrell cell hadley cell when air rises at the equator it is start to descend around subtropical high pressure belt around 30 to 35 degree latitude so this phenomena cycle completed air rising here and descending here further at ground level it move towards equatorial low pressure around the equator means it deflecting close to the ground from subtropical high to equatorial low pressure while in upper atmosphere it is moving from equator towards the subtropical high pressure towards 30 degree latitude so it is known as hadley cell after that in both the hemisphere northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere from equator towards 30 degree latitude now ferrell cell in the same manner wind that rises at subpolar low pressure belt further sink down towards subtropical high pressure belt or polar high pressure belt okay so uh, this here create ferrell cell the wind that arises around subpolar around 60 or 65 degree latitude start to descend at subtropical high pressure around 30 or 35 degree so at ground level air deflected from 30 degree to 60 degree in upper atmosphere thus opposite phenomena takes place from 60 degree to 30 degree that is known as ferrell cell now this is polar cell and the same phenomena you can also understand i hope so ferrell cell from air rising here at subpolar low pressure belt towards uh, descending at polar high pressure or around the pole in upper atmosphere at lower level when air cools down it become heavy attached to the ground so it deflected from high pressure towards the subpolar low pressure so i hope this is clear to you thank you very much time is finished hope you have better understanding clarity thanks a lot